welcome to today's cancer healing journey talks myself annie jones from community outreach team of zenonco.io and love heals cancer cancer healing journey talks helps cancer survivors and caregivers to share their journey with vast number of survivors and caregivers who have traveled or been traveling through this journey this can inspire and motivate them for their faster recovery as well i would like to introduce today's speaker renuka she is a triple positive breast cancer survivor welcome to today's session renuka over to you can you start with a small introduction of yourself thank you ali uh yeah uh my name is renuka so i'm 42 years old uh i've been diagnosed uh two years before in 2019 with triple positive breast cancer i am a mom working mom so i work as a allied health assistant i live in australia and uh, i have two kids husband so it's beautiful family but uh, it's all happened all of a sudden when i was uh, diagnosed in 2020 april it was my diagnosis it's on april 1 Okay, firstly, so I've been having some of it's sort of a left breast pain, which I can't tell you. Definitely, it's not the normal pain. So I used to have it long uh, since I think twenty eighteen, a year and a half before that. Just one breast. It's usually just like a pull pain, and it just goes away in few seconds. But after that, it. I've been going to my doctors and telling that it's happening so I don't know why because it's happening only in one breast. So I had my blood test report, I had my scans, I had my mammograms done, so everything came negative, nothing was there so the doctors said it's nothing. So it went on. So it wasn't there that it comes every day the pain, but it comes once in a month or so maybe during my period cycle sometimes not during the period cycles but uh, lately so so when when it was diagnosed uh, was in 2019 december i had during my routine breast checkup i had a, a discharge like a clear discharge uh, in that breast So I was really scared and very terrified. So I went to my doctors and they said like, oh, they referred me to one of the cancer center institutes. So it, it, when I went to cancer institute, I and the doctors checked up and saw my scans and they said, oh, it might be a um, mastalgia, like you know the muscle aches and like pre-men pre-menop pre-menopausal symptoms. <laughs> so that's what they were trying to uh, that's what the doctor said and prescribed me some over the counter medication to have it and to continue for 3 months so i think after immediately i got discharged from the doctor in 2 weeks i have noticed in my again routine breast checkup i noticed a bit of a secretion which is discharged so which is a different color which is like half white in color half white color so i was again i was really terrified with that so i was thinking this time it's like something is bad so again i went to see the doctors in april i had like bone scans mammograms and in mammogram and ultrasound they found a small lump which was uh, which was there so it was very small it's like 1.2 mm very they said it's small so i think it's small only so 1.2 mm and yes they confirm like they did the core biopsy and ultrasound mammogram and they confirmed on april 1st i got the result saying that it's like a triple positive breast cancer post two weeks post the breast cancer so i think i had all my scans and mammograms and they started the treatment immediately so <coughs> treatment immediately i think they started they would started with chemotherapy first it's a new adjuvant chemotherapy and i had like 10 14 cycles of chemotherapy and uh, after that post i had lumpectomy and then i had like four four weeks of uh, radiation after that so uh Yeah that was my journey I think that's the start 
of it so i was keeping myself strong and i think my family and i think i need to be there for my family and kids the kids looking at them so it made a major role that so i mean like it made major role that i need to be there i have to fight for this and i have to be there for them for their life you know we have only one life and we want to be there with our kids or the family or the ones who love us and the loved ones so that's how it started it was emotionally very tough journey and the first day when i was diagnosed i was at work so the, when i came and told to my husband that i got diagnosed and he said okay we're going to fight this so we're going to get through this we're going to fight this together and because we are somewhere in the far other country so we don't have an immediate family like our parents or everybody back home we don't want to tell them and upset them at the same time because they can't do and it's a covid situation as well so nobody can come and help us or uh, neither we can't go anywhere <coughs> sorry so during that time so yeah it's it's just my husband and myself we have to put together and the kids i have two boys they don't i think they don't understand we told them once and my older one said what is cancer when we asked and he said like cancer kills people you know like they die that's what he said so that brought me into tears that of course it's the cancer word itself it's it's a really scary word but during those after my radiation i met few of the ladies uh through my cancer group or uh through my cancer treatment i met three of the different ages lady uh women so they are i think after speaking to them i realized that it's not only me not only me there are so many people suffering so many people suffering and so many people are going like different stages of different stages of cancer or different stages of suffering i should say i think until then i was into my own shell so i was thinking i wasn't speaking to anybody i was into my myself and like crying emotionally upset crying all the time i like blaming myself what i've done so uh, telling to myself that uh, i mean like thinking that that the life has finished i don't know what's going to happen next that's what my my thinking was at that time so then i think uh, i think most of the thing is when i met this lady that got me a courage that got me so much support that there are people like me and who are still suffering and who are fighting back with those this disease or other diseases as well so why not i be strong so i don't know how long we gonna be but however long i i am here on the earth so be strong and try to fight it and take the life you know like hoping the life that they would be better tomorrow <clears throat> sorry uh at the moment uh yeah after the treatment has finished i was during those treatment time what i changed is i changed my dietary habits i changed my lifestyle habits so which i wasn't doing prior prior to it i was like working going back home coming home work children it as a normal indian housewife whatever the ladies does just come home cook clean work sleep go back go to bed and then go back to the routine but i think once i during those treatments i tried to change my diet complete diet is like i went to plant based diet i don't know if so if it's that but i have given up drinking dairy and um, lots of including lots of plant based dairy non vegetarian i t- uh, definitely no sugar including lots of uh, plant based vegetable fresh vegetables freshly fresh foods rather than cooking foods so 
and like going for walks regularly and uh, going for walk and like i did so meditation i included meditation in my daily routine after that to get my peace of mind or else i keep constantly thinking and i did lots of exercises i lost lot of weight during this process i don't know if it's like medication not even today i don't know my oncologist says that maybe because of my being active during the treatment so i tried to keep on burning more <clears throat> so that's it so you want me to so what will be your message to the survivors and caregivers out there i th- i think the survivors you need to fight back and we, you need to hope for the best definitely you you are stronger than you think the, the stronger you you're stronger than you think and nothing is impossible for anybody like not everything i think of my journey i would say that never lose hope and and you are the braver than you believe so finally no matter how good or bad is life we wake up every day and and be thankful for the life because you are alive today someone somewhere didn't make it but you need to be really thankful to the life and wake up with a good smile and thankful for the day and keep going and caregivers without the caregivers the survivors can't be fighting this fight back the caregivers are the much support and they are really doing a great job in helping the fighters and survivors or the warriors i should say right very true so um one last question renuka so if you have to sum up your journey in one full sentence what would that be in one sentence i would tell like never give up hope hope is the uh, hope is the not last option i should say it should be the first and last option hope and uh, hope love and courage love yourself stick on to yourself and do what is best for you look after yourself and hope for the best and give that courage to yourself and be thankful to your body that is going through so much at the same time it's helping you to heal as well that's my last uh, words and good luck for the, all the warriors and stay strong it was great thank you so much renuka i'm pretty sure that the session will really motivate the survivors and caregivers out there and thank you so much once again for being a part of the session thank you so much and thank you very much i've been postponing this one but thank you so much lovely thanks, to meet you thanks for your support as well